Hello everybody, it's Tamara Grant here with episode 41 of No Brush Required. I'm going to grab Barb, my host Barbara Reed. Where is she? There she is. How's everybody today? Feeling good? In the middle of a heat wave? Like us? Heat wave in the Pacific Northwest. We're just not used to it up here. I don't know what it's doing in your part of the world. Hello, Douglas. How are you? Barb, let's see if I can grab you. Let's try it again. How are you doing, Douglas? It must be hot down there in Seattle too, right? Good morning. Barb, I've just accepted your request. Are you coming? Oh, we love tech. Dry and hot in Southern California, I bet. All right, Barbara, get your butt on here. Get your butt on here. How many times should I invite her, guys? Do you think she doesn't want to join us today? She's unable to join. I wonder why. Let's give her another try. Way too hot. Yeah, Barbara, I have invited you four times and accepted your request. I don't know where you are. TOC, hot and humid. Yeah, there she is. <laughs> it must be the weather. I don't know what it is because I sent you a request. I accepted your request. And then it was like, nothing. It's the gremlins. I invited you like five times. Did you? And I asked. That's okay. That's okay. I asked a few times. That's yeah, okay. how are you doing? Um, I'm good. I'm trying to keep cool. How about you guys? We're a little bit more comfortable than last week. So you oh, now have our heat wave. Yeah. Yeah, although you know, right. it's nothing. It's nothing like in the states. I watched the news report last night, and the whole U.S. just looks red and orange on the weather map. Like it's yeah. just nuts. It's it's pretty scary, actually. It is. I know. All the. What are you wearing? <laughs> That's a lovely shirt. Do you like it? I love it. I didn't wear mine this week because I, I got in trouble last week for last wearing month. it. <laughs> And I was actually, I was going to message you and say, I'm wearing my shirt, but nah. um, those of you guys, this is, this is a silly in joke that we're going to let you all <laughs> in on at some point. Um, we do have like team Canada shirts for the workshop that we're going to in New York city. <laughs> we are such we're, geeks. Because <laughs> we're really geeks. Um, but we will do an unveiling because our friends, uh, Nadine Johnson and Joanne Godinier are coming as well, and they have shirts. So we'll do the big Team Canada reveal in New York City. How about that? I wonder if they've been wearing theirs as much as know. we have. Because I, <laughs> I wear mine all the time. I know, but yeah. not when I'm painting. No, because I don't want to get paint on it. I know, I know. <laughs> Although you could always get another one, right? True, but mm, that would be Yeah, bad. and then when, when we share all the details, the details which is not really a surprise anymore we will let you guys know where you could get your amazing team canada art shirts too yes. right and design beautifully yeah. whatever you want and hats i want to see that hat one day yeah. that you okay got. i will I'll, i'm not going to get it on today maybe next week next um week. so we have a fabulous guest waiting in the wings mm -hmm. yes we're we very, do we're i'm really very excited to chat with her today um shall i see if i can get her on after all the challenges you well, and i had i know and give it can, a shot i will start i will with a little um, intro i will do a quick intro okay. so if you don't know already um we have julie pritchard joining us all the way from san diego california and i've been spending the last hour or so on her website and just going through her Instagram feed, I did not realize how much she has to share. And I messaged her and I said, Julie, we need to do a deep dive <laughs> into everything that you've got because there's so much. And do there your is. wave. Do your, do do your like wave. Uh, real wave that you do. <laughs> oh, my real Oh, that's wave. the queen's wave. But the real, yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome, Julie. Thanks so Thank much for you. coming and chatting with us today. Yeah, My we're pleasure. really, really excited. I got a lot to say. I'm yeah. good because we got a lot to ask. <laughs> yeah. We do. <laughs> well, we, you know what we, this is, you, you popped onto these as 
asked watching before and jumped in before in a conversation. So, you know, it's really casual. And what we usually start is just by asking our artist friend to spend a little time just telling our audience about your, where you came from, what, what, how you started out, what you do, like the real Cole's notes version. And then we'll take a deep dive into lots of different directions. Oh, the nitty gritty. Like who the heck are you? (laughs) I was born in the early (laughs) seventies. Okay. Really? <laughs> really? Uh, You're the youngster. You're that young. says it all. Yeah, that does. <laughs> I was born to a mother and a father. No. Uh, I'm a third generation San Diegan. I live in California. IA. I live, um, team, I'm team California. I live in the neighborhood where I grew up, uh, down the street Ooh. from my parents. So, um, what's awesome about where I live in San Diego, I'm in the city. Uh, is a lot of the kids that grew up here also returned. So now mm-hmm. the parents, the kids, and the kids' kids are all here. So it's a super, I love this area so much. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a, I was a um, luxury goods, like a retail executive. I'm actually a gemologist. That's what my degree is in. I also have yes. a, um, wow. I have a, uh, uh, another college degree in fine arts uh, because before the gemology passion hit, I was going to major in photography. So when I almost finished that, I dropped out of college and everybody was like, what? I'm like, shut up. I know what I'm doing. So I went to <laughs> gemology. I finished my gemology career and um, was working heavily in um, very fine luxury goods with gemstone <laughs> identification, diamond grading, and consulting with um, sales staff and training sales staff and developing their skills with the knowledge I learned at gem school so that they could better help the customers. It was a lot of inventory management, appraisals and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, So then I had a child and I had to, you know, that was a grueling, um, it's my, it's my passion. I hopefully one day I can go back to that, but had a, a child decided to stay home and started painting. And then like in 2009 people, I was, there was a lot of blogging, a lot of chat rooms, Mm. I don't know about Facebook, but there was a lot of chat yeah. forums at that time. And people were like, you should teach how to do this. And I had already been teaching people the jewelry business through the mm-hmm. nation. Um, mm-hmm. So it was an easy adaptation. I set up this thing and it never stopped. I've, I mean, I've, I've got hundreds and hundreds of, of videos over the years of, in all the haircuts and all the fashion. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, I love, love some it. of the early yeah. haircuts. I love it. <laughs> so... Um, I feel like it's really important to me not to um, not to as much create art to leave a legacy of, but to share what I've learned along the journey so that other people can leave and maybe spread, you know, the knowledge, like sharing yeah. knowledge. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, it's it's so important to know what you're good at and what really lights you up and how you can make the biggest impact. Yeah, I like sharing pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, we can tell. It's so refreshing. <laughs> it's so refreshing because, I mean, that's how I discovered you on Instagram, is that I would see your, your videos pop up, and there would always be something in there. I mean, they're short. They're um, fun to watch. They're, they're so well done. I mean, my gosh. Thank like, you. Kudos to you. Like, I don't know how you do it. Um, and you say you I'm do all of it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, but, yeah, and you're walking that fine line that you have to online of sharing. So I call it edutainment. And you had a post yes. the other day. You talked about respect, right? So, Let me tell you, you know, something. you've got to share a little, but not <laughs> show all your party tricks. Yeah. I have a lot of tricks. I have to earn an income for my family or, excuse me, or I'm heading back to the, to the jewelry business. So, unfortunately, I mean, it's not unfortunate because there are a, there's so much I've experimented with and whatever I can always develop I can always find that content but Mm. I have to play the game I have to play the Instagram Mm. game because 90% of my um, income is coming from the platform so Mm. I'm playing the game so Mm. I have to always um, analyze my engagement I have to constantly be looking at what's working what's not working I am actually playing the game there's no way I can turn a blind eye to Instagram Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah and you're like you are on it and that's one thing that you say in in the descriptions of all your workshops that you are available you're accessible that you respond to people and you know what honestly that is that in and of itself is you know what 
I started this in 2009 when I, you know, I was a lot younger. However, I'm not very good at math. Anyway, I didn't have the resources or the, avail the availability to travel to these workshops. This is like mm -hmm. art and soul, these, these, these high dollar workshops yep. to me, they were never held in San Diego. It was very expensive here. I get it. So they were always held somewhere where I would have to fly. I never had the income and the extra money to be able to travel to them. So I said, when people started asking me to teach, you know, they were asking me to teach at these places, but it never really, the timing never worked for me because of, mm -hmm. you know, I can't give up what I'm doing. Uh, I have to also maintain the house. Um, so I decided, I said, all right, workshops are a dime a dozen. I need to make my workshops stand out in the fact that they need to be as close as possible to an in-person workshop than humanly possible. And that, my friends, equals instructor engagement whenever you need it. There's, mm -hmm. I, have, I can't say, oh, Monday through Friday, la, 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 kush life. Yeah. No, no. I'm working nine to nine on any platforms or emails yeah. every day, helping customers in Singapore, in, yeah. you know, in Canada, all over the world. So everybody's not, it, that's the nature of the beast. Nobody's, not everybody's in Pacific time zone. So I have to be available. I have mm -hmm. to make sure that all of yeah. my technology works so that when I'm at the appointment or waiting for my daughter yeah. or anywhere else, I have to, I'm working. People are like, what are you doing? Are you TikToking? I'm like, hello, I'm working. I have a job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's job. So, yeah. so that's what, well, I mean, that's what you have to do. Yeah. And I feel like you were kind of, you, you were perfectly poised for all of this big shift that's happened in the last few years with the push oh, to video because geez. you were, that's what I'm saying is that you were lockdown. there doing it let's go yeah yeah, yeah. no that's, that's pretty awesome. amazing yeah so um tell I'm gonna ask some questions so people who don't know about your courses I've just spent a whole bunch of time looking at mm -hmm. them and it sounds like your ideas for courses mainly are coming from problems that you've had but you seem to hit the nail on the head in terms of identifying those things that are common to all of us, the challenges. Yeah. And so where, where are you getting the ideas for the courses? Um, the ideas for the courses come in um, based definitely on what I'm trying to teach myself. So from a sci okay. scientist background, mm -hmm. I cannot meditate, make a painting and dance under the full moon to arrive at what I no. consider <laughs> finished art. No, Darn. I need to process the in the most efficient way possible so this gives me questions and these are the things I think about I, I always it's weird I always have a voice in my head how will people understand this so I break things down uh you know since 2009 the education catalog has totally evolved based on the feedback and all the things that I see so students in my classes will post uh their mm -hmm. in progress work and i'm like okay maybe we didn't explain this to i mean yeah. you know right away how else can i do this but because of my background in like you know the real world i understand that i need to be as clearly as uh you know speak as clearly as possible so that people understand what i'm trying to get them to do i want people to paint like the samples i want people to learn mm -hmm. stuff i don't want people to understand that if there isn't a full moon, you know, you can't, yeah. you're not going to be able to get this done. So I'm trying my best to get that information across the interwebs. That's yeah. it. And I think we, I mean, speaking for myself, I think we like to know uh, that, okay, so Julie has like eight things that she, eight steps that she goes through when she starts a painting, because for someone like me, who will start slapping paint down and pushing it around, and I'm, I'm always thinking about the things that I've learned, but I often wonder, what the heck am I doing? And if I had to actually teach what I do to somebody else, it would really force me to step back. But I love that you have kind of broken it down into, um, it's very organized, the steps yeah. that you do. I'm, I'm hyper organized. <laughs> uh, I work in a very small space. Everything needs to be, like, uh, like what I said before, efficient. So the um, caught up in the layers that ate great, oh, cheers with the bubbly. Oh, <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> Come on. not planned. Not All planned. right, no, go. we got to pause. We got to pause. You're drinking the same one that Tamara has. Lime. 
and I've got the peach and I'm still my other choice today and I'm still hunting for watermelon I have yet to find it so good I on you it. Julie <laughs> yeah that's right. no <laughs> calories I, I rather eat my calories yeah. yes um, <laughs> so the eight great um paintings I'm, I'm sorry no that's a, that's a different workshop the eight uh caught up in the layers eight steps to an abstract painting comes from okay a lot of people will start a painting and then they say they get stuck. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. so let's break this down. Let's develop eight steps that you can um, kind of like jump in and out of in any order to always give you something to do to further develop the composition in the painting. So right. if you are st staring at a painting and you're totally stuck, wouldn't you like to just be able to look at this? Okay, if I look at step two and mm -hmm. you know this is where I'm at, I can do three to eight and we're going to be good. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. The, the also the lesson is in, in the workshop has um, progress photos of me working on a really large painting uh, with those steps that actually this um, workshop actually was developed at the beginning of COVID mm -hmm. the first time. Um, okay. That didn't work, but it's okay. We're going to go back to step three and then we can, th they, they jumble there. There's a board game that's like from the old days called um, bonkers. And, yeah, and, I know. It, and the, and the, the cartoon, the theme song was like something, something crazy, blah, 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 blah. You can go forward to go backwards and backwards to go, you know, I'm <laughs> yes, like, yes, 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 that's what it is. So that's what the idea for that workshop was. Yeah. Cool. Now, is that your most popular workshop? Uh, well, uh, I didn't know we were going to be asking for any sales figures on this. Uh, oh, I don't know. No, I, no, 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 just, I don't no, just think gut I think, I think. Um, expanding on color is okay. uh, selling uh, uh, more units of that have been sold. Uh, that is the workshop that I um, recommend to everyone. Um, okay. That workshop in itself is like, to me, the home run of my workshops. Of all the workshops I've ever filmed, this is the workshop that I, um, I okay. recommend for all levels, expanding on color. Because going back to the science background, I strongly feel that if you understand the behavior and the like, kind of like the purpose and, and what's going to happen about each of your pigments, you can create better color, better layers, and then do the visual layering process that I like to do in my art. So I would definitely, those are all the, all the workshops are for acrylic artists. So okay. it's expanding on color is the one. I also have a link in my bio that, that has some questions because I can see a lot going back here yes. you know, in the chat. Uh, if you tap my name and visit my links that are on my profile, there's a link there, which workshop is best for yes. me or, or okay. that. So you can read through there and, and then I kind of like outline, you know, if you can do this, you can do this, you can, you know, that kind of yeah. thing and, and best to that. And I'm also always happy to help, but that, that article is a pretty valuable okay. tool. And I'll, I just remind our viewers that we do post the replay of this and I do write some show we, notes. So I'll make sure that it's got a link to you and some of the things we talked about. So if you're not yeah. catching this because it's flying by too fast, just yeah. wait for the replay to load. It's flying. Yeah. <laughs> it is. What's it goes happening? by very quickly. Yeah. Well, if people, people, like we try and keep one eyeball on the comments too to see what people are asking. And oftentimes you'll address it just in the natural course yeah. of the conversation. Perfect. So. Yeah. But we will we'll have some we'll open up for at the questions end. later. No, yeah. um, was there somebody who influenced you before you got into, like, were there a couple of artists who you uh, my sort mama of clicked? Is, my mama, my mom is, was, brilliant insanely detailed amazing oil painter and drawer uh, wow. drawer is that a thing Draft, she, draft, draft person. Draw, whatever she could yeah. draw anything <laughs> I, got, I have a picture one of my mom's super I mean oh wow oh, yeah. she so I was in the day to every art supply store and in the back in the day there wasn't you know they, these were little you know Aaron Brothers actually used to have really cool all the Aaron Brothers I think all closed anyway there were stores all over the smell of turpentine is mm -hmm. embedded in my my memory banks mm -hmm. um so I, I was growing up and and incidentally my father um comes from the school of thought he's he's um 90 now he mm -hmm. Uh, we all were raised along. We don't need to call anybody. We're all going to do this ourselves. So all the repairs, all the projects, everything was, was never hired out is all that. So I was always around this building, painting, whatever. 
it wasn't until um, I was much, you know, after I was getting out of the luxury goods sales that I decided, okay, I want to learn about acrylic paint. And I happened by chance into a workshop, uh, an in-person workshop in a stamp store here. And um, it was being taught by a golden working artist, Chris Cozen. And she, like, I was in there, I was like, okay, and I don't know what it is, but she, she came to me in that class, she goes, I want to work with you. I'm like, okay, I, I don't know what I'm doing, but let's go. And we, she's <laughs> kind of like, she's my modern day mentor. Yeah, that's fabulous. Those so golden she, workshops are amazing. I've been to They're a really very valuable. Yeah. So everything they know their materials. Me, we learn. Yeah, I love it. Love that. Well, I think, uh, I think in your videos, I see you using golden, um, a lot of the fluids yeah. and the heavy body. Do you kind of go back and forth or do you? Yes, I'm right now. So I go between, uh, I like to almost all fluids initially. Um, that's what I learned on back in the day in that workshop. And then now I feel like I'm working more towards, I really appreciate the heft and the body of a thicker paint. So I'm almost all heavy body now. Mm -hmm. um you know obviously the paints behind me are collected over many years but mm -hmm. um i'm buying when i run out of the fluids i'm buying them all in um heavy body and i like um i like the golden um open line a lot too so i'm yeah. going in between heavy body and open now pretty much mm -hmm. yeah, well, i like the drawing time i like that i yeah. like that extended yeah. drawing time on for, them, sure. for sure because really i do nice, a lot of it's it's yeah, you do a lot of blending yeah. on your surface too. It just a lot of color mixing on your surface. It just gives. It's more like an oil paint, right? I have one tube of open <laughs> acrylic, yeah. and I always forget. And I'll grab it and go, "Why isn't this drying?" Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, "You idiot! It's the open one." <laughs> it, it, could take, it could take time, but it's it's oh, really yeah. nice, especially if you're in really warm climate and things yeah. are drying too fast for you before you can blend. So I always talk about that in the workshop as another, uh, uh, it, what's great is when you, I only use golden because I've, and honestly, I've, I've tried a lot of paints. These to me feel the best. These yes. work the best for me. I like their feel the best. So that's what I do. But since everything is the same line, they're all interchangeable. So that's, yeah. I appreciate that a lot. Yeah. And, and if you use their mediums. Yeah. Right, their mediums right, are great. Right. Yeah. Keep it, keep it simple. Keep it in the same thing. And, and when there's never any problems, uh, interchanging those products that's so true so have you got any new workshops coming up anything in the pipeline you want to tell us about or um, it's hush hush right now? um there are some ideas percolating um i feel that perhaps so um this year is going to be the first year ladies get your bubblies this is going to be the first year that i do not have to drive to pick up a child at school <gasps> I remember so, that year. That. Cheers. Cheers to that. No more Cheers to that. So I will be having some free time, a lot more, you know, less interruptions. I have some ideas percolating. It's very difficult for me to figure out how I can make a workshop better than expanding on color right now. Uh, but I mm -hmm. am percolating some ideas, but nothing formulated. Yeah. There well, you're going to have more coming, time. But I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I've, I've started filming and then I've stopped and I've started and I'm like, mm-mm. So well, you've got hard. so much already. Like I was, I know I was really impressed. And I thought, yeah. you know what? I could pretty much sign up for any of them. I like, honestly, you're, any you're not even you're I've retired like 10. Mm -hmm. but that's not even the full catalog that's up there now. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 there's a lot, there's a lot of videos in that yeah. archive, but uh, and I, I, love, get I love that you, you, um, let us know how many hours of video it is so that yeah. you can kind of yeah. get your head like you know what because not everybody wants to do you know a multi-week program if you know it's five hours that you can yeah. kind of approach it that way right yeah i'm i'm starting to film less videos that are longer the technology since since when i started is way different so that's in itself difficult to you know mm -hmm. in the editing software and whatever is much different than when i started so now uh, even workshops that could be four hours might only be four videos. Closed captioning is more readily available, those kind of things. Yeah. So all those upgrades to the footage are now available since they were back way back mm -hmm. in the day. Um, but I mean, it's, it comes down from working in, in retail. You've got to know what you're buying and you've got to yeah. make it easy mm -hmm. for people to understand. I don't want people to come onto my website and have to sign up and get email and get spammed and scroll yeah. for 17 hours just to figure out the price, put the price there and let us, you know, 
Yeah. I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm like a consumer advocate with that regard. So yeah. I, and I always try to make the descriptions know exactly what people are getting. So yeah. I, hopefully that's clear. And then of course be available if people ask questions about what's in there. Yeah, yeah. no, I think it, yeah. it, it really appeals to somebody like me who wants it. Like, I want to know what it is yeah. before I get it. And then I want to savor it when I've got it. And really yes. enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I'm curious about favorite. your brights, your brights one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the, <laughs> the brights workshop, so um, the brights workshop was filmed before expanding on color. So that was like one, a special topic. So um, I uh, like very vivid color. Um, mm-hmm. I like to be able to do that. And there's different um, characteristics with different pigments that will either enhance or yeah. prohibit mixing yeah. and layering with those. So the brights works on that topic mm. specifically. So the two samples that are in there, in there you'll see, here's one. Okay, yes. excuse my reach. <laughs> what is this called? Um, fortunately for raspberries. So this Georgia. is a- Yeah, like that's a, so, um, yeah. honestly. Bright, like, but yeah. it's not just the single pigment, it's no. super layered and a lot of tonal variation. So that's the yeah. type of topic um, that goes on in that workshop, um, you know, that's pretty, uh, like a compact, this is what you're, you're going to learn how to do yeah. that. So that's, if you, that's the topic you're interested in, that's an excellent workshop for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, oh, that, that's that brilliant. One, that, um, that jumped out at me because I thought I'm sort of mm-hmm. I'm dabbling in that a little bit now and, and it's hit yeah. or miss, you know, when the paint I mean, is wet, it's gorgeous. And then it dries, and even though you've got underlayers, maybe not the right underlayers that are going to make that color pop, but it's like, it just, you know, yeah. there's something, it lacks something when it dries. Here's Glow. Oh, she's Bye. gone. Oh, I'm, coming, I'm coming right back. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm picking her brain. Yeah. Because I really want to do this one. Yeah, I do too. Oh, it's just like, like they're. Emma, how big is this? I can't. This 24 by 24? Is it's that, the same principle. Yeah. In yeah. This, this is 40 inches by 40. It is. Wow. Yeah. It's big. I can, oh, I'm God. real close. I got a, I'm got a small situation going on here, but here's yeah. this. I'll do it like this. Scroll. <laughs> yeah. You can so scroll. That, that's, that's it. Like a drive so button. Live yeah. action. I've got things oh, hanging above edges. me in the ceiling. Oh, she went way too fast. You see I'm those sorry. edges? I, I got um, 40 <laughs> inches by 40 inches. I've got. Uh, camera booms, I'm going to wreck something. Um, but I teach on 20 by 20 inches because that's the Good easiest size. thing for me to film. Yeah. I can film yeah. that. And then when you watch the footage, you can get in there, you can see it close. And um, then those techniques all translate to, you know, whatever. But I, I feel like that's a good size for people to kind of like ha- be able to handle mm-hmm. when they're learning something new. For sure. But so, like 12 by 12 are so small. Like I've done a lot of courses. Yeah. Where so I, these are 20 by 20. But your 20. moves are so small in a 12 by 12. But 20 by 20, you can start to Good get. Size. Yeah. Yeah. So my question is, um, I mean, I, on your website, it looks like you're, you're aiming at all different levels of artists. But from myself, having taken a lot of courses that have been much more general, I feel like, you mm-hmm. know, I'm, not a beginner artist, but somebody who's already sampled a lot of a wide variety might be your best customer because I want to come in and I want to learn how to do mm. this. The deep dive. Like, yes, the deep dive. Yeah. That's what I want. That. Yeah, dive in. Yeah, without without having to like, oh, I already did this. I know about this. I know. Yeah, you want to just get in there and have like a, it's like an orange concentrate, you know, that just. Yeah. We try, uh, to, we try to, so um, a lot, and back at the beginning when I was doing this, when Chris told me that she wanted to work with me, we did joint teaching. Mm-hmm. Um, so we would say, you know, this, these workshops are for all levels. There really is a lot of tangible technique content, or I can't write a workshop, like, like I said. Right. Um, but we will, if you come in and you say, I want to do this, I, I can push you if you're, if you want something different. So because of the availability that I have to interact with the students mm-hmm. when you get the work, the workshops, some workshops come with coaching and some do not. And that's indicated on the website. So uh, because of the economy and, and things that are going on right now, I dropped the price on those. And for the summer, I'm offering those without the coaching. So that's like, okay, take it and enjoy it and you have it. But the other ones with the coaching, I can definitely push people that may already know a little bit, but mm-hmm. I find usually that there's a lot in there that is new to right. people. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of us are not used to doing deep dives. The world is not set up these days for deep dives into anything. It's I know. set up to be superficial. And I've been yes. ruminating on set this a lot 15 lately. 15 second reels. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can, I, I, I mean, you got to love it. You got to love the platform. 15 seconds. Maybe, hopefully I can give somebody some inspiration and they can see, oh my yeah. gosh, look at how she's holding that, whatever. But most of the time, if you really want to do some changes or learn something pretty solid, you should probably, you know, bump on over into a workshop. Yeah. No, I, I, I'll i tell you, I when we get off of this, I'm going to go back to your list again <laughs> and put my little check marks besides the ones that are really speaking to me, you know. Like nice. You, you know what you need, too. Like, you kind of know what you need. Yeah. So, Julie, okay. have you ever put together a curriculum? Like, I'm thinking, do you have, like, a, a I know you said, that you have a guide that says which workshop is right for me, but I'm almost thinking, so I'm in situation, self-taught artist, done lots of workshops, but I would love to do my own personal MFA. So that would be me deciding what topics and courses. Have you done like a curriculum like that of your courses? I uh, used to have that a long time ago. We had a big, we had so many courses running, Chris and I, that I had a, a big spreadsheet. Uh, and the spreadsheet had like, yay like, like yeah a, that she all like the that. courses and then I love the top that. this one had composition this 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 mm. but um over the time we're able I was able to I'm able to simplify I'm able to make the 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 swim the deep dive more concentrated so I do the list but a lot of people um for example they take the Canyon color workshop and they complete it and they they come and say okay yeah this was so fantastic I loved it I want to take another one what do you think and I'm able right. to ask them and tell them, okay, if you want to do this, if you like this, you should go this. Uh, I think. I love I mean, that. Yeah. That, I, that, I, so I'm happy unique, to help. Right? Uh, yeah. I'm happy to help. That's so cool. I could help people understand that uh, better, I think, than just, you know, I don't want you to sign up for something that is wrong. Uh, I mean, you know. I'm yeah. conscious of my budget and I'm conscious of yours. <laughs> yeah. You know, and we've so, all signed yeah. up for, we've all signed up for the oh, workshops yeah. that we've gone like, Oh, this really wasn't for me. I didn't get as much out of this as I wanted because it wasn't I what I expected or I hope yeah, no, it sounds like happen. you're so transparent yeah. in describing yeah. what you're offering. So and your you. little um, video, like you have your little video preview for each yeah, one. Commercial. You can see yeah. like, okay, I want to yeah. learn more about how you did those yeah, paintings. I want to people, connection. I want people to see the, I want people to see the footage. I want people to see that. Okay. Now, let me think. I'm pretty sure almost everything that I have now has multiple camera angles. So some have two, some have three. Mm -hmm. So I want you to, if I'm painting and I think of something, okay, they're going to want to know this, then I'm going to come and I'm going to talk to you like this. Cause I want you to see my face, <laughs> my inflection. Yes. Cause it's, it helps. Yeah. Cause you're, oh, for you're sure. in an in-person workshop, instructors talking and you're looking over their shoulder. So I have both of those hammered out. So I, I, I want to be able to, talk to people so that they understand okay listen <laughs> and i and i like to do it in a light-hearted way where you know don't do this because i'm gonna come and get you but you know i mean we <laughs> yeah, have you just fun. try you just try you, you know <laughs> you gotta you have to try you have to realize it's just paint you have to yes. don't stop don't panic we can fix everything so just hang yeah. on and and interact and everything will be good <laughs> yeah yeah now you said recently i can't remember which post it was um that you're now <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was flipping through everything uh, that you were working on canvas, but now you're starting to kind of lean towards more towards wood surfaces. Yeah. Uh, so this painting is a, is a wood panel. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, it's, <laughs> it's difficult to ship. Uh, so that, I mean, it adds I mean, a lot of weight. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I like the, like, I like, the t the tension and then that it's yep. rigid i yep. like that mm -hmm. a lot and i can create a lot of different effects on wood than canvas i don't do any sanding but i just like the i don't know i like i like you that can it's get solid. in there like you, you can, can be more rough. aggressive or yeah, more assertive can, right yeah i'm a little aggressive i'm an aggressive painter <laughs> um yeah. uh, but not sloppy uh, so, uh, yeah, I like the wood just because of that, ri that rigid feel yeah. on there. Uh, but you know, I don't know. I went there. I almost fell over. It's very, things are expensive right now. Yes. That panel alone was like 63 bucks. I was like, what has happened? Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I do like that. I do like those more. I don't have know you what ever, preference is. 
Have you ever stretched your own canvas, make your own canvas frames? Douglas was asking about that, whether you've, that's something you've tried to do before. Where Doug, uh, thank you, Douglas, for the question. Um, <laughs> thank you, caller. Uh, <laughs> um, here's what happened. And I'll tell you the story. I'll, I'll give you okay. a visual. One moment. Do, do, do. Think about yourself. Or talk amongst yourself. Do, okay, do, so, do, do. It's the Jeopardy. Oh, I can show you my Hello. Dance. So uh, oh, I had a 36 by 48 inch canvas. That's a sizable yeah. canvas. Wait, There's say X. that again. What was that? Come back. 36 30. by 48. Three by, three by four feet. That's a big rectangle. Yep. Okay. Big rectangle. Had one of those. Those canvases uh, are not always available locally, so I get them shipped. Of course, yeah. there now is an extra fee. So I said, well, I'm, I'm doing my budget conscious here. So I bought unprimed canvas, whisked that bad boy out into the garage, destroyed the other painting, which is fun. Uh, just, I'm not being sarcastic. You no, get, get it out. We agree I with have you. A few I, want to kill. <laughs> I, I do it with a golf club or a knife. <gasps> hold the whole Jack Nicholson moment. You need a reel on that. Yeah. yeah be, <laughs> Jack like, somebody might call the police. <laughs> um, so I bought the, the um, private canvas, dirt cheap, got a lot of it, got excited, stretched it. That was easy. Hammered in the, uh, what do you call it? The keys, made it tight and everything, got it in. Let me tell you something. This sucks up so much gesso. Oh, wow. I was like, oh my Lord, this is terrible. It's too, it's, um, it's not like, just la la la. It's like a full on calorie burning workout. I hated it. I never did it again. Um, I, it's finished. That's it. But I won't do that again. Uh, I will stretch my own <laughs> now. And just, you know, it's it, uh, in the scheme of things, the amount of money is yeah. not, sa not that much of a savings because the gesso was insane. This yeah. is like, <laughs> this is three coats. Or, I mean, it's just like, you want to make sure that you have a, a good thing. I, I made this because I had some scraps and I was going to I don't know, I'm messing around, but uh, I, it's I'm also time. It's also time and yeah. enjoyability. Like you have yeah. to factor in what, how do you want to be spending your day? How do you want to be spending your time? You're, you're right. Yeah, it's not Cheers fun. To that. Yeah. yeah. Somebody was asking about how you prime your what what you do with your boards, whether you um, put anything on them before you gesso them. Absolutely. Oh, before gesso, no, but I do gesso. So it's three layers of gesso. So I put a layer of gesso on. Um, and then I allow it to dry and then I do a light sanding and then I do another layer and I repeat the process so that I have three layers of gesso and that surface is like, but it's, it's beautiful yeah. uh, because you have to do it, repeat it because when you're, you know, each time you do that with a brush, some gesso, you know, mm -hmm. if we were to look at it in a microscope, like we were grading a diamond, it's yeah. going to be higher. There's peaks and valleys in that that you may not even see. With so you want to yeah. even them out and cover and make sure. So that's what that's what I do. It's always a beautiful surface after that. I bet. Mm -hmm. hmm. I don't mind. I don't mind the roughness of sometimes an uneven surface. Sometimes that can play into a painting quite nicely. Yeah, it can. It can. But. It can. But uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. That that is like really. Slick. I well, like. Like well, based on like what I've seen of your paintings, never having seen one in person, th th it looks like there's something about that color field that you want it nice yeah. and smooth, as opposed yeah. to nooks and crannies and. I you think know. so, and I think, uh, and I actually asked this today in the in the Instagram feed. I I'm a big fan of if I'm going to have texture, I'm going to put it on there deliberately. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. the rest of it, the rest of the area is going to be smooth for me except for the texture, in which case I'll probably be calling attention to that texture some way in the composition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So I'm going to nice. throw it out for questions mm -hmm. while we continue oh to talk. If anybody has any questions, you can either use the comment and we'll try to catch That's them fire. as they fly by, or you can use the question sticker um, just underneath Julie's hands. There's a question sticker. There was one somebody was asking That's about. Bye -bye. <laughs> yeah. Um, was asking about whether you didn't like put a sealant on under your gesso to produce uh, or to reduce um, structural induced discoloration. Oh, well, the wood. The, the, yeah, yeah. You don't worry about that. I know some people do, some people don't. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. Does that, is that, a, I've never heard that. Uh, you know, no. I, the, the I, maybe there's a I, lot of gesso. So, it I could know. be. I mean, the answer I've heard some people say is like, I really don't expect my paintings are going to be around in 200 years. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, yeah, it's okay. a bit flippant, but well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. Um, aren't these even light fastness 
uh, 100 years is the, uh, oh, yeah? is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure it's 100. I don't, for, this is not in English. This is French. Uh, what happened? Maybe I bought a random. Uh, no, I think the, the paint, the light fastness is only guaranteed for 100 years. Anyway, the varnish has a UV shield. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I've never had any. You've never had problems. the wood, like no. like the the um, the tannins or whatever from the wood, kind of seep through. And I always no. think too, acrylic is plastic. Yeah, like, yeah, that's, that's a heck true. of a seal. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot on there to be able. To, I mean, who? I mean, I don't know. No, nothing's ever happened. Oh, okay, somebody, good, wants know, <laughs> somebody wants oh. to know if you gesso the back of your wood panels. No, they're oh, right. raw. I, I, I threw another question up here. Lisa's asked a question oh, um, it. about, it's, it's interesting. Should one land on one style of painting to build a brand or keep changing it up? I like that uh, question. One style of painting. Well, um, I'm painting what I like, mm -hmm. um, which just by uh, definition has one style. I feel like... Um, I feel like the only reason that the only way that would come into consideration is in your website, your social media. If you try to have a consistent presence, I don't think it's some of the, some of the artists that I like have drawings mm -hmm. and paintings and hybrids of both. I think mm -hmm. that after you amass a body of work, it's easy for a viewer or a collector to see and recognize your hand. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's okay to do that. I think that maybe if you're doing watercolor and you're doing acrylic, that some, that you, I think that you can ma marry the map, you know, recognize mm -hmm. the same. I would say do what you like. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about a definition, but I think yeah. after you paint for a long time, and I think that's the key is you, your body of work will look cohesive. Yeah. I think it depends on what your goals are too, right? Like if you're yeah. trying to pitch to a high end gallery and they want to see a cohesive body of work and they don't want yeah. to see 14 paintings with completely different palettes and styles yeah. and some yeah. representational and some abstract and, and a beach um, landscape. Yeah. And a beach. Yeah. Landscape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Probably. And then, I mean, even, I mean, when we, when I was, I was doing photography, I kept the two websites separate. I kept the feed separate. Um, so from that, with that regard, I kept things separate, but from the paintings, um, I think it, I think it's okay to mix them. Okay. I got a bunch of, sorry, I got a bunch of technique questions oh, that are coming okay. up already. Okay. Sorry. So these are, no, these are specific. Um, oh. so a question about varnishing. And what oh sheen gosh, do you I prefer? You, All these how personal are shooting questions. across the box. This is, I've never seen this before. Do you varnish a finished painting? And if so, what sheen do you prefer? I like satin. Uh, the matte varnish has particles in it to make it matte and thus they're going to mute my color. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. um, satin varnish, uh, glossy, I think is too shiny for me. Mm. Too much. Here you go. What sandpaper do you use? Oh my gosh. See, they're getting I specific. Knew, I they're knew specific. somebody was going to ask that. I think 250, uh, I think, oh. I don't know. I have to get back to you. I just had to go buy some. I think 150. I'm not positive. 150 grit. I can go. I can let Tamara know later. I have to. That would be like. That's not in this area. Yeah. <laughs> that's in the outdoor area. I have to go look. That's okay. We did talk about this, but I'm throwing it up again because somebody yeah. has asked where. Where can they find your classes? Sure. On Instagram, you can touch my name, and there are links in my bio where it says, you know, the words at the top of the profile, and the links can direct you, or it's julieprichard.com, and there's no T in Pritchard. Yes, and I will put those, uh, I will add that to the show notes, so it'll Thank be you. there for you on the replay, yeah. guys. It, I mean, I think, I think a lot of artists now are using third-party services to host their workshops. Uh, I like to be able to control. I know that I have a reliable web host i know that you know I, all the things that i have things are not going to go down if they do it's because everything is down you know it, it, right. that that's inevitable yeah. but i like to have, be able to have control of the product totally so everything is on my website oh that's really good to know because i do know that um one of the platforms that somebody was teaching on maybe it was teachable just 
some one of those platforms just got taken down yeah. changed this year and some and people had to move their courses in yeah. a very short period of time yes. that is important was it teachable no i don't know what it was there's a remember. lot of them but but the thing is is that back in the day we started on, a, on an old platform called ning and i was there and we had a thriving community and the first class i wrote was called layered love uh version one uh way back and all of a sudden they said, okay, change in terms. All of a sudden this was a lot of money. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't afford this. So I had to move. And every time you move, you lose people because people are not going to make the move. That's yeah. the nature of the beast. So you want to yeah. be somewhere where you can, you know, set your roots and be permanent and not have to relocate yeah. when something like that happens. That's a totally valid concern. Well, and this is, this is the same as everything else on social media. You know, you've got to have your own piece of real estate on the internet. You can't rely you on do. the apps. You, you can't do. rely on other people's website and services to host you because if they go belly up or they have a problem, you have a problem. Yeah. Instagram could be gone tomorrow. Uh, could. Yeah. Yep. It could. Then so. what will we do, Barb? We're going to have to oh, podcast. Shoot. We'll have to podcast. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to podcast. No, you can't do this. I'll follow. Too. I'll follow hmm? you guys. I'll follow. Good, I'll thank you. Yeah, thank you're you. welcome. <laughs> yeah, we love so this though because you can see who we're talking to. There's something yeah. about podcasts where you just hear them. But I, yeah. I love to actually, I love the visual part of this, especially if you can show us stuff, right? We love yeah. showing stuff. Yeah. I, hey, here's important. another good. And, and I will also Sliding. say, podcast requires editing, whereas this doesn't have any editing. What happens happens. We don't have a um, musical intro. Yeah, we need one. We should make one. <laughs> yeah. So Lisa had asked, said, thanks for a great answer. Do you have a trick to calm down a painting that gets too busy or too messy? Um, I do. And that would be to um, understand the opacity of your paint. That is in the layering process that I teach. It's also in the caught up in the layers um, uh, workshop, the steps in there. Right. Um, it, it comes with understanding the product of, of full understanding. Okay, so too much, too big an answer to give on. <laughs> too, I, I, I have to respect the people that are, that's a, that's a big Absolutely. part of composition. Composition editing is a big yeah. part of, of the workshops. It's an important part. And I have to respect yeah. the yeah. students that are already no, taking. Yeah, and, and I think it's really important. I know some instructors who are who um, there's, there's a lot of variation online in what instructors who teach courses feel comfortable with their students sharing. And I have come to, to the, the realization that it's important for people to protect the things that they're creating and mm -hmm. creating yeah. and, and oh. giving to others. So, I mean, I, I'll, I'm sharing, I'm pretty, you share a ton. I share yes. a lot, oh my but uh, that is a, that's not a little, that's not a real topic. That's a, that's a big understanding yep. of yep. a process that needs to be, I think, covered in more in depth in, in yep. the workshop. Yeah. And probably more than just, you know, is it color busyness? Is it the, is the palettes getting too complicated? There's is a whole, the there's a simplified whole design. Is it your values yeah. are too yeah. mid, yeah. you know, like, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's a huge topic. Well, and then there's the general question of what, you know, what is busy and messy? Some people strive for that in their work. Some people yeah. are looking for calm and spaciousness. So it's all relative sure. to what you're looking yeah. for, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. makes us all different. Yeah. Do you have so more questions similar. or can I ask my little question? Well, no, I want to ask a question first. Sorry. Can I okay. ask a question first and okay. then you can ask a question back? <laughs> I love Sorry, the question. Sorry, I stuck my tongue at it. <laughs> <laughs> my question, Julie, do you invite people into your studio um, when they visit San Diego? Lord, no. Me too. No. <laughs> so when I come no. to San Diego in November, uh, are you going? Reach out and meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Coffee. Oh. I I have to tell you, and this is a very sad story. I don't know if I feel comfortable sharing this. <gasps> you know, Com Comic Con is here, uh, oh, yeah. and a dear dear friend is an exhibitor, and he I came, and he hasn't been here because it hasn't been, and I had to feel most comfortable listen i'm taking care of my elderly parents yeah that is comic-con has two hundred thousand people coming through a day Ooh. i said look we're gonna have to move i'm very sorry to zoom and he like totally understand yes. uh this studio is literally this big there's not a full situation other than this that you can see so i'm i can we can meet for coffee I we will it. meet for coffee that yeah sounds for awesome. sure for sure send me a message when you come i in. will i will okay barb your turn yeah barb <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming too. No. Oh, <laughs> no. Um, oh uh, do you uh, get into mixed media? Like, do you get into working with papers and, and you know, uh, yeah, monotypes? Uh, 
I got, uh, let's see, uh, mixed media right now. There's, uh, I don't have anything handy to show and tell. Um, I do a lot of sometimes I have some, you know, collage papers. I like to, when I'm working, take a jelly print of the palette that I'm working with, keep those aside in case I feel like I need to glue some jibber jabber or whatever uh, yeah. collage on there. A I great will idea. Do collage that. But mostly the um, the mixed media is going to be the acrylic and the uh, some crayons or some yeah. pencils or some uh, oil stick, that kind of situation. Right. Okay. Big Got fan it. of I gel see you like the Karen Dash. I, I was looking at your list of things that you love to use, and I I think I have yeah. all of them pretty much. Yeah, I think so too. I, I well, I just I just replaced. You know, they last a long time. So I had a decades. Set gotta <laughs> yeah. be like ten years old. I just indulged and bought the big set. And the um, internet, the the reel that broke the internet was the day that I dumped them out of the box. People went berserk. I lost a ton of followers. Look, what? I keep them like this. Oh, because they're all messed Haters. up. <laughs> they're all messed up. I can reach in and pick one. That's it. I know what colors are there. I've been using them a long time. So. Yeah. Um, a lot, a lot of people went wild when I they got the upset. And dumped them out. Oh, they got upset. They got upset. I was like, dude, I bought a beautiful tray for them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't, I don't understand my tray, that. I, I don't yeah. sort them. Like they've totally, like it's a mess on my tray. Yeah, and half of them are broken up. and like yeah. the wrong buddies. Yeah. So yeah, it, that would it, piss people off. That 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 set had like a down an upstairs downstairs too. There's no way I could if I were, if I were keeping the tray, I have to take everything apart. Then all of a sudden yeah, I'm yeah. taking up my whole situation. Yeah. <laughs> so Bonnie yeah. was asking, what was the product? So they're Karen Dash. Were they Neo Color One or Neo Color Two? Or? Uh, these are the water soluble, sol water soluble Neo Color Two. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but. Do you get these, the the ones that don't run? I just got Are, them too. I got I love them. I got, all pack. I got like a ten pack. I think I got the metallics. I oh, I love the metallics. So there's a situation. I don't like. Uh, here's now. This is where things get crazy. <laughs> and Julie, I don't like the way the crayon looks on the wood. So what I do. Mm. Here's a tip, everybody. If you're listening is when I make marks on here, a lot of times I'll grab a small um, paintbrush in water mm -hmm. and go over it to make it smudgy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm obsessed with eyeshadow videos. Totally yeah. Obsessed. <laughs> yeah, the I love to watch, the, the makeup artists on Instagram oh, are yeah. geniuses. And yeah, I yeah. like, I get sucked in. That's, that's a good 15 second time spent. The blending yeah. and the, the whole thing. I mean, I don't do any of it on myself, but I love to watch that kind of stuff. You know, yeah. It's the same thing as art supplies. Makeup is fun yeah. to look at. I'm yeah. in no way doing anything. But, yeah. So I like to smudge them. So the ones that don't, uh, you know, the, the stay put ones, uh, it's, it's kind of not my jam. Okay, well, can I show you something that, oh, sorry. <laughs> you go, I yeah. know, I know what you're going to say. So I'm say just going to grab some. Okay, so What's... Bev, if she's on this call, um, got me to order these from King Art. These oh, are like lip sticks, okay? They're, they're the gel, yeah. gel love sticks. And I think I've got like 76 of them. I love these, but they just disappear off, <laughs> off the surface, so. What do you mean? They come, um, they're not because they're so soft and mushy and you can like do all kinds of cool things and I'll spray them with workable fixative. And then the second I do anything on top, they've like bled into everything else. So I don't oh. know if you've discovered these and if you had no. a secret. Because uh, for me, the, the Shiva oil sticks, when they're, before they cure, I can yeah. smudge those, those. That's lipsticky enough too. You guys have those? I've been using the R and F, yeah, and I've been using the R and F oil sticks, but those just take forever to dry unless you add a little bit of cold wax. They to them do, and, really and they're very them expensive. Thinly. They're, yes. oh, yeah. Whew. They're very expensive um, <laughs> compared to these. These have a binder in them. Right. It's a, the Shiva nice. artist stick. And they go on like lipstick. And what happens is, is when they're in the tub, here's another tip is they get, they develop a skin. So you take yes. a Zacto knife and you kind of like whittle the, the skin off and then you can whoosh, whatever. And then these cure in a day or two, depending on how oh, heavy nice. you put them on. A lot of them in a day. Yeah, but those so are oil, right? Those are oil. These are oil with some kind of additive that 
cure that um, cures that hardens. This is like seven bucks. Yeah, and look, and it's big compared yeah. to the RF one. That's a nice stop. size. Like you want it to to be sig like significant yeah. in your hand. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that's this, these last a long time, and that, yeah. they're they're pretty inexpensive. So I don't mind uh, if they break and stuff like that. But I like the RF. I like the plan. I like. I know it's a really good company, but I don't have the space to have a lot of stuff out drying. Yeah. yeah. No, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. And it's just different. It's different to work with it than if you're used to working with materials that dry faster. You just have to change the whole way you do things. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm pointing at the time. Because yep. we don't want to lose this video and, and we're always in danger because we always have so much to talk about. Any last questions, Tamara, that you see? I don't see any popping up. Um, if you guys have oops, one, one question in the question box and we have a quick answer. Oh, what brand of gesso do you use? Douglas wants to know. Golden. Golden. Okay. Yeah. Golden. She's a golden girl. She's the golden yeah. girl. I use this. I have a Liquitex here. I use it for like painting big signs, like if there's a garage sale. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, cheap. it's cheap and cheerful. Yeah. Uh, painting on top of the Liquitex gesso is not the same feel under the brush. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know. I like, yeah. I start buying this. And that's the Hold gesso on. in a tub? Yeah, it comes so in a tub. Nice and it's nice and thick. A, that's a 32 ounce um, yeah. size. I, I don't think this, I, I bought this recently after the uh, large painting escapade with the raw canvas. Yeah. So I don't, I think this is the packaging. You can get the, you can get the big brush in there. Get the purdy brush yeah. in there. I like yeah, that but... brush, that size better than the long, the, I bought the one before that often comes in like this, the long, tall one. Hard to get your brush in there, but that's for the medium. I yes, think. but I also, I also did buy gesso from them that was in that same container. Oh, I don't really? know if it's a Canadian packaging thing versus a U.S. Oh. packaging thing. Could be, right? Sometimes mm. those things do. Yeah, then you got to like pour it out into like a paper boat or something yeah yes. yeah and it's just messy and it's wasteful it's so. so messy i i end up with gesso everywhere i will try and be as careful as humanly possible next thing you know my arm is covered in splats in the window it's like how oh yeah there's a lot of like what do you call it over spray spray whatever i got a i have a an apron that i want to plug this company is called rendell co it's r-e-n-d-a-l-l -L co it's a woman-owned company mm -hmm. in los angeles they're sustainable they were beautiful enough and lovely to, to send me this. I had purchased another one and the company reached out. So I love this. I always wear it. It's a beautiful fabric. I don't know if they ship to Canada, but if anybody's watching, I'd like to, to plug the, the yeah. women-owned businesses. Right. Got to check it out. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we are going to wrap up. One last thing I want to say before we thank you is last week, our winner of um, oh, yes. Carrie Classen's <laughs> Olivia four ounce paint was Bonnie Downs. Congratulations, Yay, Bonnie. Bonnie. Yeah, hey, Bonnie. Now Harry's... I gotta show you my yes. monkey because I'll get him wound up. This is for okay. Bonnie. Oh, Yay. Nice. Yay, Bonnie. <laughs> so, Julie, thanks so much for spending an hour with us. I can't believe how yeah quickly it's that flew. went by. My and, pleasure. Um, I will. We will send everybody over to your website to look at your workshops and your courses. And um, I'm gonna hold you to that cup of coffee in San Diego in November. Yeah. Be in touch. Yes. You, let me know when you're coming. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Absolutely. All right, bye-bye, guys. Yes, you're welcome. Thanks, Thanks, have a great week, everybody. Great week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.